folks, how you doing? Gonna do a loose podcast type episode today, so sit back, settle in. There's a lot worth talking about, and we're gonna start with old Sarah Boone. Two weeks ago, Sarah Boone's seventh lawyer quit. The judge also quit, so there's a new judge, new lawyer. When the when her sixth lawyer quit, the judge was like, so what, you don't wanna be her lawyer anymore? And he goes, your honor, I can't be your lawyer. She called me a dud. And now the seventh one is history. There's a new judge, and Sarah is actually thrilled about the new judge. We also have a new letter from Sarah. So without further ado, let's see how Sarah feels about these new changes in her case. Rather impressively, Sarah figured out exactly how to write in the same bizarre, off-putting way that she speaks. So here we go. Finally, a new judge. It's strange how the Lord works as I was in the process of trying to disqualify Wooten after being my judge for four years and me incarcerated with nothing to show other than seven, seven different attorneys, not by choice. News clips of me walking in and out of the courtroom and everything relative to my case permitted to be slathered on the global internet. That's the worst. When Clips of you walking in, out, in and out of the courtroom are slathered on the global internet. What's the global internet? And in which I have not seen myself. I felt he was the ticket holder to my overly hyped, illicitly distributed, misconstrued criminal case. And a great reason I am still here again ongoing for years and seven attorneys later. I think they need to set up a support group for all of the people that attempted to be Sarah Boone's attorney. I picture all of them sitting in a circle in a dingy church basement. The air is thick with cigarette smoke and the smell of cheap coffee. One of them speaks. So I was um, Sarah Boone's lawyer number four. Everyone's like, hello, four. Ever since I... I worked with Sarah. I haven't been able to practice law since. Every time I'm like, all right, you got to get back to work. Even just thinking about taking a case or opening a law book, my palms start sweating and I start shaking. And half the time I have to dive for a trash can to throw up. For about the past two years, I've just been watching TV and sweatpants and my wife left me. I heard recently she's dating another guy, another lawyer, and just through the grapevine, I happened to hear that he won his most recent case. So, hey, listen. <laughs> she ruined my life. <laughs> the moderator's like, thank you so much, number four. That was really brave of you to share that. Okay, well, unfortunately, number five sadly jumped off a bridge last week, so we'll just go straight to number six. Go ahead, number six. I think what they need to do, instead of wasting more time and continually assigning her a new lawyer and then waiting for her to show her personality and then having the lawyer quit and doing it over and over again, which is literally the definition of insanity. I think this new judge needs to have a talk with Sarah and just say, okay, Sarah, it doesn't seem to be going well with these lawyers. Without giving up any uh, attorney-client privilege type stuff, broadly and generally, why don't you think it's going good with these lawyers? Why do you think each one happens to quit? And see what she says, and then I think the judge is going to have to go, all right, do you want a lawyer in this case? And if Sarah says yes, then the judge should say something like, well, okay, Sarah, then you're going to have to drastically change your approach to these lawyers if you want a lawyer. And if you don't want a lawyer, we got to talk about that direction. And I think the past judge, Judge Wooten, that's history now, now there's a new judge, I could tell Judge Wooten did not want to deal with what was right in front of him, which was Sarah Boone in all of her patheticness. And it will be tedious, and it will be brutal, and it will be one for the absolute books. So I'm hoping that she represents herself. Are we just going to keep giving her another lawyer over and over again? Instead of doing that, they should just ask the couple lawyers that are left in the area, hey, 
You want to take on the boon case, and then when their eyes go wide and they shake their head quickly, no, just say, all right, well, let's just tell Sarah. Sorry, Sarah, you went through all of the lawyers that there are. Here's the list. All the ones that you've had and that have quit are crossed out. See, there's none left, Sarah. So we'll see what happens. We're all probably going to be old and gray and sick by the time Sarah finally goes to trial, but we'll, we'll keep following it. Oh yeah, another news story that has me totally glued is what's going down in Haiti. Are you guys following this? If you're not, the government has totally and completely collapsed and evaporated. And now a guy named Barbecue is in charge. It never fails. Anytime there's a coup or a government collapses, it's like, who seized power? Is it a reasonable person with a common regional name? No, it's uh, General Barbecue is in power now. Oh, well, does he go by barbecue because he throws a mean cookout? No, it's because he burns people alive in their homes. Oh, damn it. All right. Have you ever thought about how, how your reign would go as an unhinged dictator? I've watched... I think pretty much all the documentaries available on unhinged dictators. And I started thinking about how would my reign of power look? And I don't think that I would be this long multi-generational dynasty thing like the Kim family. I think mine would be short, like right around 10 years is what I'm picturing. And I'm picturing about three to four years. I think I would do pretty well, make some good changes, help the people. And then I think around year four, once the power went to my head, I think that would usher in my corruption era, which would be a blur of custom Rolexes and pet tigers and solid gold AK-47s, constantly wearing sunglasses inside to hide my opiate shrunken pupils, feeding my critics to grizzly bears, and so on. And then I think around year six or seven, my rampant corruption would come to light. And then I think a year around year nine or ten, the people would turn on me and beat me to death in the street. Meanwhile, across town, a bunch of my kids and a few dozen of my mistresses come to a screeching halt at the airport in cars that are sagging horribly because the suspension exploded under, all of, uh, under the weight of all the cash and gold bars. So that's how I think my reign of power would go as a unhinged dictator. I invite you, think about how yours would go. It's a fun thought experiment. Okay, now I want to talk about old Robin Nasida. I can't believe this story isn't everywhere being talked about. I really do think this is one of the most crazy, insane stories going. There's all of the videos I do on her do terrible. Seems like the interest in it is incredibly low. Seems like the algorithm hates it, but I don't care. I'm covering this one until the brutal end. And people that have been following this channel know the last video I did on Nasida, I was doing the swim. I was all happy. It was early in the week and I was telling everybody, finally, this woman is set to be sentenced on Friday of this week. She was going to be sentenced a month ago, but her lawyer was sick. So it's this week. It's big sentencing week. I can't believe it. If you don't know who Robin Nasida is, I've told the full story twice, but she tried to get a local politician's children taken away by filing a false child abuse claim. When she got caught doing that, she said that she had brain cancer and couldn't face the charges, and she made up a brain cancer doctor named C. Marquez. Once they figured out that C. Marquez and his oncology clinic was totally fake and made up, the trial proceeded. She was found guilty. They made one sentencing date. The lawyer was sick, and then they made another sentencing date, and I didn't think a million years there would be any more games or any more craziness with this case. And there was, on that big sentencing day, Everybody piled in. It was a packed courtroom. The people that were reading the impact statements had their statements in hand, ready to go. Everybody was ready to see this woman get what was coming. And what's wild about this one is 
she really isn't facing a ton of jail time. Could easily be no jail time, and I think could easily be around six years, and that's a big difference. Imagine trying to sleep the night before sentencing. Am I gonna get probation, or am I gonna get six to 10 years? Not a relaxing thought. And so, the big sentencing day, packed courtroom, the time when the, the hearing is supposed to start comes and goes, and Nasida is sitting alone at the table with no lawyer. 15 minutes go by, 20 minutes go by, 30 minutes go by, and Nasida is still just sitting at the table alone. And eventually the judge makes a statement to everybody and says, okay, everybody, so Robin Nasida's lawyer is a no call, no show and we are not able to do the sentencing today. And the courtroom breaks out in murmurs and scoffs, and the judge has to go, order, 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 I'll clear this courtroom, don't think I won't. And so let's just talk about this. Here you are, let's talk about Robin Nasita, because this has to be games that she's playing, right? Her lawyer already, was sick the month before. So it's not like some crazy sickness came out of nowhere. And there's really no reason to no call, no show. If the lawyer was sick, actually sick, and actually just needed a couple days or needed a week, and then, you know, this is wasn't a Nasita game, she could have called in and said, I'm sick, or he, I don't know who, I don't know what, but I'm sick. I got, I need a couple more days. But to no call, no show, it's obviously Nasita's trying to, play in the CETA game and why I think it's so dumb is once you're convicted wouldn't you think all right since this judge holds my fate in their hands why not just try to play the game as much as possible and get the least amount of jail time what does it do for Nasita to plan with her lawyer okay so the first sentencing date you're, you're going to be sick. And then the second sentencing date, you're going to no call, no show. It's going to push it off again. What are you getting from that? Maybe the judge was thinking, all right, I'm gonna get, let's just do probation. Let's get this woman some serious help. She's a total wacko. And then now you've already faked a brain cancer and concocted an entirely fake oncology clinic. And now you're trying to just move the sentencing another month or something what do you get out of it i don't see it you're just making the judge that's going to decide your fate matter and matter and another the woman the local politician that nasita tried to get her children taken away apparently and there's a witness too apparently nasita walked by her out in the hall of the courthouse and got like really intimidatingly close to her and like stared her down as she walked by it's like nasita what are you doing? You, you've already brutally and embarrassingly ruined your life. To bump the sentencing off a month and make the judge furious and make it look like you don't care and aren't remorseful or anything doesn't seem to be the best strategy. So I was doing the swim for no reason because now Nasita's sentencing is in April. So let's see if she keeps playing games or it just decides, all right, let's face the music. Okay, so now I want to talk about who, um, oh yeah, Nicholas Rossi. So Nicola, old Nicholas Rossi appeared in court again, still remotely. He's still just doing the, maybe if I just wear the oxygen mask and stammer and stutter and be totally incoherent that will get me out of these charges there's a new judge and in a seeing over his case and i think the judge has the right personality because some people are just better naturally at handling people like nicholas rossi than others and this judge seems like he can naturally make all of the things that Nicholas Rossi is doing, all right, I'm going to make you tote me around in a big, giant, heavy wheelchair. I'm going to act like I need this giant oxygen tank. I'm going to pretend I'm not the person. All of this stuff. And this judge seems like he knows how to make it a pain 
for Nicholas Rossi and no one else. So this hearing, and we'll watch it together, it's super short, but this hearing, the judge is going, okay, um, we're going to move towards trial. We're going to set it up. We're going to do one more hearing. And then the next one after that, Nicholas, you're going to have to come in. Or no, no, no. The judge was calling him Mr. Knight, Arthur Knight, which a lot of people were getting mad in the comments being like, why is the new judge calling him Arthur Knight? He should call him Nicholas Rossi. But I think there's, I think there's strategy to it, but because he's calling him, he goes, I'll call him Arthur Knight, but it's just an AK, you know, he is Nicholas Rossi. The case is under Nicholas Rossi, but I don't mind just as a courtesy calling him Arthur Knight in my courtroom. So what that does is Nick, Nicholas Rossi, he's hoping that that snags up and delays like the whole thing that they get caught in the weeds. Is this, and the, for the judge to just go, yeah, I'll call him Mr. Knight, but that's it. And we're done with that. It kind of, that was his main strategy. And then Nicholas wanted to ask the judge to make, he wanted to ask the judge if the judge could tell the staff at the jail to refer to him as Arthur Knight. And so uh, uh, Nicholas Rossi's trying to ask the judge that, but he's stuttering and stammering and he's got the oxygen mask on. So he's just going, uh, I, you, you on a, and the judge, instead of sitting there and straining and trying to hear, what, what is he saying? What? The judge was like, hey, listen, just quickly. I, I can't hear you. Um, we're going to move on to, you know, he was seeing like a bu bunch of cases at once. We're going to move on. If you want to take a second to call your lawyer, Nicholas, you can tell her what you're trying to say, and then we'll come back to you. And Nicholas looks frustrated for the first time. He's going, He's looking at like the guard in the jail going, no, I don't want to talk to the Lord. I want to say something. And as he's getting frustrated, I was thinking, yeah, Nick, your life sucks. What do you expect? And that I think is really good news for the judge to be able to flip all of these things that Nick is doing to try to make it a pain for everyone and to solely make it a pain for himself. And he's getting frustrated. I do think that is the right mentality to have. And then also really good news in this case is the Law and Crime Network is now posting the hearings, which at first when he came back to America. I was thinking there was going to be pictures of him being rolled off the plane. The media was going to be there. Everybody was going to jump on the story and there was nothing. And then I've been watching the hearings up until this point on local Utah YouTube channels. So the fact that now, all right, I think we're going to be able to watch this full trial. The judge seems like he's got the right strategy to deal with him. I think there's some good news, and I think this one's going to be absolutely ridiculous. But let's just quickly, people, it seemed like they enjoyed when we watched his short little hearing last time. So let's do it again. I'll flip you around. All right, folks, here we are, the latest Nicholas Rossi court hearing. He's getting to appear remotely. He gets one more of these appear remotely hearings, and then the judge has said after that he will be transported, giant wheelchair and all, into the courtroom. Here he is looking terrible and pathetic like usual. Here's the new judge that's pretty good. And then here's his lawyer currently. Funny enough, Nicholas hates this lawyer and wants the whole thing to be delayed so he can get a new lawyer. And why that's funny is when he starts stammering and stuttering and being incoherent instead of the judge trying to figure out what the hell he's talking about, the judge just goes, all right, well, you just call your lawyer over here and tell her what you're trying to say, and then we'll get back to it. Well, then Nick gets really frustrated because he doesn't want to talk to this lawyer. He doesn't like this lawyer. He doesn't want this lawyer to oversee his case. So again, it's just the judge doing little tiny things to reverse all of Nicholas Rossi's pathetic strategies. Okay, so we're going to pick up where Nicholas is trying to um, ask the judge if the judge could ask the staff at the jail to call him Arthur Knight. Here we go. He says, I'm being called Rossi in jail. I, I can't I can't hear you, Mr. Knight. I don't know if you can remove your mask just for a few seconds, but I, I can't hear you. Can you let me know, Joe? Can you let me know? Arthur 
See him shake his head right there in frustration. Watch, Nicholas is getting visibly frustrated. He's about to look at, up at the guard that's standing there and give him like a what the hell? Like I can't even work. Look, watch this. Can we call back into the jail and and try to clarify what you're trying to communicate to the judge? All right, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, Imagine talking in a fake accent behind a oxygen tank that's not needed and then getting frustrated that no one can hear you. Mr. Knight, you, you're on the calendar for April 19th. Your attorney's going to try to get back in touch with you in a breakout session. And, uh, Look she, at him. If, if she thinks you need to... See, isn't that Judge Great? He's like, all right, man, we're moving on. You can talk to this lawyer you don't even like. And Rossi's going, no, wait. Address the court further. Uh, I'll, we'll be here for a while. So let me... What's up, the one... One, please. Chat with her and figure out what it is you want to say. Yeah, the problem is I can't hear you. Uh, so why don't you chat with your attorney and figure out what it is you want me to know. What a circus. Know, uh, See him look at the, idea, the guy. Okay, okay now he's leaning in. Can you hear me? He's all the way in. So, Arthur, I'm going to give you a call, and we're going to recall your case, okay? Just give me one second. Thank you. We'll call you back when we need you. Or you let us know when you're ready. It's like, sorry, Rossi, this is only going to suck for you, pal. And so now the judge hears another case while they just, like, shrink Rossi's screen down over here. Oh, yeah, just call your lawyer that you don't like. You can just discuss whatever the hell you're trying to say with her. We're moving on, pal. Okay, we're going to skip ahead. I think it's like 13 something. Great. Okay. Can you please recall the night, man. We can. Uh, Mr. Knight, can you hear me? Okay, so I skipped about 10 seconds. I mean, sorry, 10 minutes ahead. The judge ruled on a whole nother case, and now him and his lawyer are back. Here we go. We can hear you. His oxygen tank is just directly in front of his face. This is one of his new strategies from the first couple hearings. He figured, I'll put the handle directly in front of my face. That should delay this whole thing another two seconds. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, what he was trying to communicate to the court is he's frustrated that the Utah County Jail is referring to him as Nicholas Roxy. Um, I let him know there's nothing that this court can do as it relates to sort of the filings in court. Um, but I suggested that this court could make an order that the Utah County Jail, at least just when they speak to Mr. Knight to refer to him as Mr. Knight. Well, here's the thing. This case is filed against you as Nicholas Edward Rossi. Uh, Mr. Knight is an AKA. So um, when I call your case, technically I have to call the Rossi case. I'm happy to call you Mr. Knight. I am not inclined to issue an order requiring the Utah County to, to use a certain name. Perhaps the judge in Utah County might, uh, but I, I, I don't think I'm going uh, to put that condition upon Utah County. Oh, no. Does that mean but this I judge isn't going to be? The defendant is Mr. Brett, Mr. Knight in my courtroom. Okay? So, Mr. Knight, I will see you on April 19th at 1 o'clock. And again, that will be virtually. The next hearing after that will be a preliminary hearing. You'll be transported here to Salt Lake. Boom. All right. Well, now it doesn't sound, maybe that it's not going to be the judge, but how well did he handle that? It's just, sorry, can't hear you. No, not going to tell the jail what to call you. I'll call you. I'll call you as just a courtesy, but that's that. All right. See you in a month. What a circus. Can't wait to see how this one ends. All right, folks, I am back on scene with the creepiest van in the world. Many people probably like four, have asked for updates. So here I am 
after walking past this thing for two years and thinking, how have they not towed that away? I thought last week was it because there was a bunch of signs hung up over here saying that the TV show Harlem was going to film and everybody had to move their car and everybody was going to be towed and the anticipation was building and it made it like it always does. There's still poop on the front seat, the poop seat, so that's something. The one major change is when I first got out here, I was like, oh no, the blood bucket has been stolen or moved, but it's actually just over here. Whoever Subaru this is, fix that tire. Remember, this tire was flat last week. And then another thing I forgot to show you guys last week when I did this video, Another weird thing about this line of cars that never moves and just all seems abandoned is multiple of them have cameras in the windshield just facing like this direction. Look at this one. This van hasn't moved again in years and look, there's a camera right there. What is that? And there maybe like two or three down, there's another van with a camera in the same spot. You filming us, I'm filming you. Woo.